Section 5.8, curve fitting with quadratic models. Please write down the essential question. How do I use quadratic functions to analyze and predict data? Recall that you can use differences to analyze patterns in data. For a set of ordered pairs, with equally spaced x values, a quadratic function has a has constant non-zero second differences as shown below. So equally spaced x values means just like it says here, going up by one, up by one, up by one. And then looking at the y values, we're looking at second differences. So it's looking at when we go from nine to four, we're going down five, down three, down one, and so forth. And then when we go look at second differences, we look to see how these change. When you have constant second differences, you have a quadratic function. And here's a picture of the parabola. So example one, determine whether the data set could represent a quadratic function. That's exactly how we're going to use this. So the first thing we have to do is you need one, number one, we need equally spaced x values. And up by two, up by two, up by two, up by two, you're good there. And number two, we have to look at first differences. That's looking at the y values. And then we're going to look at second differences. All right. So when we look at first differences, we're looking to see how are we changing from negative one to one. We're going up by two. We're going up by six. We're going up by 10. And we're going up by 14. So those are, right there, those are our first differences. Now our second differences, we're going to look to see how the first differences are changing. So from 2 to 4, we're going up by 4, we're going up by 4 again, and we're going up by 4 again. Because the second differences are constant, we can say yes. This represents a quadratic function because second differences are constant. Perfect. All right, example two. Determine whether the data set could represent a quadratic function. Well, number one, we need equally spaced x values up by one, up by one, up by one, up by one. So that's good. Number two, we need to look at our first differences. So let's do that. We'll put that in red. So this is going up by two, this is going up by six, up by 18, and up by 54. Okay, so we're looking at the first differences just like we did here. And now we have to look at the second differences. Remember the second differences have to be constant. So when we go from two to six, that's going up by four, six to 18, is going up by 12 and 18 to 54 is going up by 36. So this is not a quadratic function because second differences are not constant. Example three, 
Another example. Same directions. Determine whether the data set could represent a quadratic function. Number one, we need equally spaced x values. They're going down by one, down by one, down by one, down by one. That is good. Number two, we have to look at the first differences. So that's looking at how the y values are changing. They're going down, down, going up by two, up by, oh, up by two, up by two. We have a problem because as you noticed back in example two, the first differences are not the same. That's how the y values are changing for both of these. The first differences are not the same. We're looking to see that the second differences are equal, and then we can say it's a quadratic function. When the first differences are constant, it is linear. So I'm going to right now say this is not a quadratic function. And over on the side, I'm going to say when first, and everyone should be writing this down, when first differences are constant, the function is linear. All right. So now it says calculator directions. We are going to be doing that in class because I'm going to show you how to write a quadratic function using a graphing calculator. So yes, you need to bring your graphing calculator to class. And let's see, the rest of this, we're also going to look at this in class and example six in class. And here's your video question. Please do it in your notes.